Hi everyone, I'm Nick. I'm from the University of Colorado Boulder and the University of Oxford. I'm going to talk about WIC, which is a behind-the-ear wearable system for micro sleep detection. This work is done with our collaborators at the University of Colorado System, the University of Wisconsin at Madison, the University of Texas at Arlington, Virginia Commonwealth University, and Children's Hospital at Colorado. Microsleep is a period that our brain loses the consciousness of the surrounding environment. It can be costly and even deadly. To get an idea about it, we can watch a short clip about Simpson, who is experiencing frequent microsleep during his work at a nuclear power plant. Microsleep is also a serious problem for driver like Mr. Bean here, who is trying to keep himself awake are people working at night, night security guard, ship worker, navy sailor, etc. In the US, there are more than 65 million people suffering from microsleep because of sleep deprivation, narcolepsy, and sleep apnea. The microsleep issue costs more than 400 billion a year in the US alone. What actually happened during a microsleep? To answer it, we need to look into our nervous system. The origin neuron in our midbrain area is the center of our wakefulness. It has a link throughout the brain, the visual motor pathway, and the sympathetic nervous system. When sleep, sleep pressure builds up, the inhibition of origin neuron leads to a series of action. In terms of conscious state, there is a shift from a brain waves from wakeful alpha activity to slower theta activity, which represents sleep. In behavior term, there are slow rolling eyes, irregular eye blink, relaxed facial muscle tone, and reduced wake line activity. These are the key biomarkers to capture microsleep. Currently, there are two main approaches for microsleep detection. Video EEG and the maintenance wakefulness test is the current medical gold standard for quantifying microsleep, but they require complicated setup, sleep expert, and technician. It also have a high cost, so daily usage is not possible. The second option is to use camera. This approach is commonly used for driving scenario. However, the main limitation with this approach is that the camera can only capture the behaviors and cannot see into our cognitive state. Besides, it also raises strong privacy concern at the identity of the user in review. The performance is also limited by the environment and the lighting condition. As a result, we would need a new solution for microsleep detection. We need to be accurate, low cost, and socially acceptable. In this work, we propose a behind the ear wearable system called Wake. We is able to capture the key biomarker of microsleep. It is also low cost and can be used daily and socially acceptable. The behind the ear form factor is motivated by the fact that bone conductor headphones with a one behind the ear are becoming widely used. This technology trend gives us an opportunity to enable a wide range of cognitive monitoring and improvement applications. We had gone through the background and motivation of WIC. In the next session, I will discuss about the challenges and our solution to realize WIC. The first challenge that we need to tackle is to identify the location of our sensor so that wearability and sensing sensitivity can be achieved and a minimal number of sensors is also de desirable. Our key observation here is that the ear is the intersection of multiple microsleep biomarkers, such as theta activity in the midbrain area, alpha wave from the occipital, EOG from the movement of the eyes, EMG from muscle group linked to the chin, and EDA from the sweat glands on the back of the ears. Besides, it's also a natural harbor point where a wearable device can be worn. If we take a closer look at the temporal bone, we cover the whole behind the ear area. We can see that it had two major parts, the squamous and the mastoid. The squamous is a thin upper bone. We would want to place a biosensitive arrows there so, that, so it can be close to the brain. The mastoid is the thick lower one. We can, where we can place the reference to maximize the voltage potential for EEG, EOG, and EMG. EDA can be captured by placing electrodes on the area with high square gland density on the back of the ear. With this, we can reduce the need of multiple sensors 
on the head and face into a small set of sensors behind the ear in, to achieve wearability. But how about sensing sensitivity? To confirm this, we conducted a set of experiments by placing the sensor behind the ear. Furthermore, there's a question that we need to ask. What are the unique characteristics of the behind the ear signal so we can take them into account while realizing wake? In the first experiment, we can see that both channels can capture alpha activities when the subject eyes are closed. In the second experiment, we can see that eye blink can be captured in the, by the first ear channel, while eye movement can be captured by the second one. EMG from facial muscle contraction can be easily captured by both channels. Finally, EDA can also be seen behind the ear during the exciting periods. From the data, we noticed that our behind the ear EEG and EOG had a fairly low amplitude than the ones from standard placement. This is probably because of the further distance from the signal source. Additionally, there's an overlap between behind the ear EEG, EOG, and EMG signal with a significant amplitude. This is the challenge that we need to address to ensure high fidelity signal. One of the most important challenges of designing a reliable wearable device is to cancel out the noise created by human motion and coupled from the environment. From our in-lab experiment, we can observe that environmental noise can has a significant impact on the capture signal, while motion can completely distort the signal. According to the literature, there are two main sorts of motion artifacts, micro movement of the sensing electrodes and microphonic triboelectric effect of the signal wires. They lead to the fluctuation in the electrical pathway, resulting in noise. Radio and electromagnetic interference from various applicants can be easily coupled into human body and signal wire with act at antennas. To make it more challenging, depend on the, on the environment, the noise could vary. So, a solution also needs to work across different environments. We propose a technique called three-fold cascaded amplifying or 3CA to mitigate motion artifact and environmental noise in real time at electrical levels. In a conventional system, we can model the relationship among the output of the signal, the contact impedance, inherent capacitance of the signal wire and input impedance of the amplifier through this equation. The tribal electric effect due to the movement of the wire will create changes in the inherent capacitance. On the other hand, micro movement of the electrodes will create changes in the contact impedance. To address the fluctuation, we introduce state one unity gain amplifying. By doing impedance transformation in this state, we can eliminate the effect of the inherent capacitance. Rewriting the first equation for the input of the first state, we will have a second equation. The change in the contact impedance can be mitigated when the gamma in the second equation is minimized by using a unity gain buffer, maximizing input impedance, and placing the amplifier as close to the address as possible. To address the noise coupling from the environment, we will need to add another state called fit forward differential preamplifying or F2DB, to amplify our behind the signal before driving the signal wire. F2DB technique is employed in our design so we can enhance the common mode rejection ratio, which is the ability to reject noise coupled into the human body. Furthermore, it also produced amplified and fully differential output signal with a robust again environmental noise coupled into the signal wire. For F2DB to work, we need to remove the DC component inside the input signal. The conventional high-pass filter suffer from component mismatch, which compromise the common mode rejection ratio. So we use a balanced AC coupling topology to effectively remove DC component without suffering from component mismatch. One of the challenges that we noticed with our behind the ear signal is the overlap between EEG, EOG, and EMG signal in three order of magnitude range. As a result, using a fixed gain is not efficient. Using a high gain to have a better resolution for EEG and EOG 
can can saturate EMG signal. On the other hand, using a low gain to avoid saturation will increase the noise floor. To handle this issue efficiently, the gain of our amplifier needs to be changed on the fly. To do so, we made several observations on the pattern of our behind the signal. First, strong EMG events don't happen frequently. However, they can certainly happen with a significant magnitude. Besides, EMG signal is stochastic, so it can vary significantly. We introduced our state 3 of 3CA, adapted amplifier. We employ a programmable instrumentation amplifier and include an adaptive gain control algorithms in our firmware to control it. Based on our observation of the behind the air signal, we devise our algorithm with three steps. Initially, it will keep the gain at the maximum level so that behind the ear EEG and EOG signal can be captured with an, a low noise floor. Then it needs to react quickly to a to certain increases from the initial state so that it can capture EMG event quickly. When an EMV event is happening, it needs to react slowly to certain decreases to avoid gain oscillation due to the variation of the EMG signal. We find out that both square law detector and big envelope detector with dynamic window can achieve this property. However, we decided to employ big envelope detector because of its low complexity to be implemented on the firmware. So I have talked about the main challenges and our solution. In the next session, I will present our implementation and evaluation result. This figure presents an overview of our system. Our hardware consists of a pair of silicon earpieces attached with bio-signal sensor and 3CA circuits. On the firmware, we have the analytic gain control algorithms and processing function to digitalize sensor signal and stream them to the software on a host device. The sensor data is then be processed and decomposed into separated components. They are fed into our machine learning model to classify microslip event. The following figures show the design of our behind the silicon earpiece. We choose silicon so it can be comfortable to wear and deform with different ear shape. We embed a memory, memory wire inside the earpiece to keep our sensitive electrodes contacted with the skin. The last figure so our custom built sensing hardware. We have a low power MCU, an analog front end, and a Bluetooth module to provide wireless communication. We conducted four sets of experiments to evaluate our wake prototype. In the first experiment, we compared the signal captured from behind the ear with the grassroots one. The grassroots signals are captured by medical grade devices with standard placement. The experiment was about 40 minutes long. The captured signals are shown in the following figures. We can see that our behind the ear signal has similar shape and pattern similar to the grassroots one. However, the behind the ear EEG and EOG signal are much smaller. To quantitatively compare them, we calculate the normalized cross correlation values. The results show that our behind the ear signal had moderate to strong correlation with the grassroots ones and contain enough biomarker for microslip detection. In the second experiment, we evaluated the ability to withstand noisy condition in the real world. In our motion evaluation, we compare the signal with and without 3CA during walking and driving. While standing, we can capture the eye blink clearly with and without 3CA. However, during walking, the signal is completely distorted by motion without 3CA. We can observe a similar result during driving scenario. 3CA can reduce 11 to 19 dB of the noise power introduced by motion. In our environmental noise evaluation, we compare the capture signal in three different environments, in an office, in a residential area, and inside a car. The results show that electromagnetic interference are minimized by, with 3CA by 9 to uh, sitting dB. When a subject is sitting in the car, most of the environmental noise it actually came in from the motion of the car itself. In the third experiment, we evaluated the ability to detect microslip with quick by conducting the maintaining a wavefulness test on 19 subjects. The video PSG system and the scoring from two sleep experts were used at the ground truth. 
Our data set had more than 40,000 data points. We developed a hybrid classification model to classify awake and microsleep epochs. In the LEAP1 subject, our validation, our model can achieve 76% for precision and 85% for both sensitivity and specificity on an unseen subject. On a specific subject, we can achieve more than 87% for all of the metric. Finally, we evaluated the usability of WIC by conducting power and thermal profiling and a user study. During the active state, our prototype can last for more than 9 hours and had the average operating temperature of 38 degrees Celsius. This showed the feasibility of WIC to work over a long duration. In terms of the cost, the total cost of our prototype is less than $150, while the video BHE system can easily cost more than $20,000. We conducted a user experience study on 36 people who have used WIC for at least two hours, and an additional study with eight people who wear both WIC and eyeglasses during their daily activity. The study showed promising results with more than 80% of people feel comfortable wearing WIC and are willing to use it during their daily activity. Only a few people feel slight discomfort by wearing both WIC and eyeglasses and using the conducted gel. In this work, we had made the following contribution. First, we devised a 3 shear technique to mitigate motion and environmental noise. Second, we identify a minimal number of areas behind the ear so that a wearable compact and socially acceptable device can be designed. Third, we, a hybrid classification model is developed to classify microsleep at second level resolution. Finally, we evaluated our prototype on 19 subjects to show the feasibility of work. There are still rooms for improvement in the future work say like conducting a microsleep detection evaluation in the real world, optimizing the wake device, and exploring different effects of human artifacts. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you so much for your attention.